Hey, m Nation, Jason here, and today we're getting back to the basics. Well, kind of the basics, the VFR sectional chart. We're not pulling that on paper, we're looking at it on ForeFlight here today, but I wanna take you through a sectional chart quiz. Before I do that, I need to take you through uh, just a brief sectional chart overview because you could be watching this as a student pilot, you could be watching this as a soon-to-be CFI as well. So we're gonna teach to all levels here today. Let's start, and actually let's look, I have my iPad here, let's start by looking at Orlando's airspace. It's complex, it's difficult. We have a tack chart so I can zoom in a little bit more and see that, but when we look, I need you to first realize and understand, especially when we're looking at busy Bravo airspace like Orlando, that you see all these lines and all these numbers, but never forget that airspace is three-dimensional. In fact, our 3D animator here at M0A made a really cool animation of the airspace we share with our ground school members, I'll share with you now. Let's take the class Bravo airspace and let's show it three-dimensionally. Let's work in now some of the class Delta, class Charlie airspace. So we can see that when we're flying, you ever heard someone say the airspace is an upside down wedding cake? And I always wonder, I'm 16 years old, I've never seen a wedding cake at the time when I'm working on my private pod certificate, what are they talking about? And it makes sense, it's this funnel type. When we see it three dimension, I wish I had an animation like this when I was doing my private pilot decades ago now, but to help us see it and better understand it. Anyways, let's go back to 2D, let's go back to looking at our iPad here together. So we can see, yes, we have Orlando right here. Here is MCO, Orlando International. Above that is some class Delta airspace. And I wanna point out a few little things. Let me punch in a little bit further so you can see this. Why on earth is this class Delta airspace have this minus 16? I've never seen a minus before. What does the minus actually mean? Well, let me remove that annotation there for you. The minus is showing us this is up to, but not including 1600 feet. Why is that? Well, look to the right side of the screen. Do you see this class Bravo shelf? Goes and starts at 1600 feet. Airspace cannot be two things at the same time. It's either Bravo or it's Delta airspace. So in this case, that class Delta airspace is up to, but not including 1,600 feet. So it's 1,599 feet, you're in the Delta, 1,600, you're in the Bravo. Let me show it to you another way, as displayed with Class Charlie airspace. For that, let's head a little bit up to the north now. Let's look at Sanford. You notice Sanford's Class Charlie, same thing here. I see a surface to T, 1,300 to T. 700 to T, talking about this little area um, over here. What, here's another 13 to T. What is the T? Well, it's essentially the top of the Charlie is the bottom of the Bravo, is what it's telling us there. Let me show you in greater detail. Let me clear out of these annotations and get out of annotation mode. So we can see that this class Bravo airspace, this particular shelf here, goes from 3,000 to 10,000. And if we were to draw this out, we can kind of trace that Bravo. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit more. It kind of keeps on, that, that shelf kind of keeps on going there, as you can see. Um, as we paint it all the way around. This one kind of then breaks off that way. So it's from this particular shelf is from 1300 up to 3000 until we get to the Bravo. Again, that is up to, but not including. So 2,999 feet, where am I? I'm in Charlie airspace. 3000 feet, where am I? I'm in the Bravo airspace. Does all that make sense? All right, let's look at some other great little things that we can kind of share here. Let's look over here at the Bithlo Towers, all right? First off, this top number here, that is what? That is the height of the object in mean sea level. The number below it is the height in AGL, in parentheses. So, my bad aviation joke that I always say, if we were to hit the top of this tower, this number is what our altimeter would read, this number is how far we would actually fall. Does that help you remember it perhaps a little bit better? Remember these lightning bolts coming off the top of this here? That's showing us what? That's showing us we have a lit tower. And of course, this flag pendant with the name Bithlow Towers right there that you can see, that's showing us it is a VFR reporting point. Meaning I could call up ATC 
and say, hey, 23 Mike Zulu, I'm over the Bithlow Towers. It's a VFR check-in, a VFR reporting point. ATC is going to know where on their screen the Bithlow Towers are. So they can see that. It's an easy way for me to call up and check in. It also makes a great VFR cross-country checking, uh, uh, kind of a checkpoint along our route of flight here. Let me clear out of my annotations here and get out of annotation mode as we work through a few other things. Here is something interesting. Only two of these in the country that you'll see. This, of course, is Walt Disney World. It's actually shown the TFR is actually depicted on the sectional chart. It is still very much a TFR, although it's existed since 2002. So uh, is, it a, is there such a thing as a permanent TFR? Well, this is a temporary flight restriction. It's a permanent temporary flight restriction. It sounds like an oxymoron, but it's been there since 2002. My vote, it isn't going anywhere. You can get cleared through this. Um, sometimes on flight following, almost always on an instrument flight plan as well. They'll work you through there as well. But you can kind of see that, and it draws that out. I just want to show you uh, Disney World and Disneyland, to my knowledge, are the only two TFRs actually drawn on a sectional chart. Uh, not to be confused with, say, something like a prohibited area, which we have one I always like to reference up here near Jacksonville, which is old P50 that we can see here. We see this prohibited area there of P50. By the way, St. Mary's Airport, unfortunately, now closed. When I test flew 512 Romeo and I was buying it, I flew it from Craig to the St. Mary's Airport. Big reason for its closure, uh, just being so close to P50 and the runways were aligned, they had to kind of come out and make a quick turn so you didn't end up in P50. Sad story for the St. Mary's Airport, uh, but still showing us, um, when you see this symbol, by the way, it's a closed airport, but it's a closed airport that still has navigational value, meaning if you were flying over the St. Mary's Airport, you could still tell there was at one point an airport there. It might be a little overgrown, but you can see how the runways were laid out, taxiways, ramp space maybe even still. It still has navigational value. This is why they mark it there as closed, so you can actually look and see that. All right, let's go, uh, let's follow the coast down. I want to show you one last little thing, and I want you to chime in with your comments. Of course, we can see the Space Center here showing us one of our relatively newer symbols here, showing us uh, for a space port as well. We know all that's happening over there uh, as of recently, some super cool stuff happening. But we can look and we can see, oops, sorry, I'm annotating all over the place here. Clear out of that, get out of annotation mode. Here's another example of a TFR kind of shown on a sectional chart. If you look, you can see when they have a launch, this is what the TFR is going to actually look like. So the TFR is so routine, happens enough that they'll depict it so you can see it. Hey, it's not, it may be hot, it may be cold. It's not saying whether it's hot or cold on the chart right now. It's saying you need to check that when there is a launch, this is the TFR we request, request every single time. That's why it's shown on the chart um, as that. Zooming in, of course, we can see our restricted airspace, 2932, 2933. Just offshore a little bit, we can see a warning area shown with the W there, both shown with very similar symbols, uh, including add an alert area to that equation as well, uh, all showing those blue type hash marks. The real difference, restricted, can I fly in it? Well, if, is it hot or is it cold? If it's cold, yes. If it's hot, absolutely not. A warning area. Can I fly in it? Absolutely you can. A warning area just warning me, typically it's always off the coast, warning me of low control areas. Radar just doesn't work as well as it does at the lower altitudes out there over the coast. An alert area. Can I fly in an alert area? The answer is absolutely, I can fly in an alert area. It's just alerting me to something I need to be aware of. We can get some good um, alert areas down in South Florida. A lot of our training partners down there um, do so much training, you can see our alert area shown here for concentrated flight training. I'm sorry, showing in the magenta uh, hash marks there, you can see our alert um, area. Just that's the common traffic uh, area, the common practice area for uh, the majority of the flight schools out. We know South Florida as the, uh, the hotbed for training, no doubt. So we can kind of see all of that over there. But anyways, M0A Nation. Hope you learned something today, really working through this. What are some chart symbols that confuse you? 
Maybe you can screenshot a few and add them to your comments or give me a link to them. We'd love, myself and the team, love the challenging questions, love to see and certainly learn new things. Good Pilot is always learning after all, right? The purpose of this new series is really the, the greatest hits from M0A.com. And oddly enough, sectional chart reading always ranks at the top of our video playlist. It's something you all are hungry to learn more on. Hey, should we do the same for low and root charts? Let me know in the comments below. We get some thumbs up votes on that. Be more than happy to do the same video for low and root charts as well. Listen, thank you. Thank you for being a blessing to myself and this amazing team here at m0a.com. It's because of you all that we do all the crazy things we do, put out all this content, uh, work on the online ground school <laughs> to the crazy hours of the morning and night. Uh, we do it all for you. If there's anything, anything at all you need to help make you a safer, smarter pilot, please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a wonderful rest of your day and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you. Take a two-week free trial of our online ground school and see why Aviation Consumer Magazine named it the top online ground school on the market. The first thing you'll notice is that we never teach to the test. We teach real-world skills that are going to keep you and your loved ones safe when you fly. Now, it's because of this real-world teaching, you'll pass your knowledge test and your check ride with flying colors. With one membership, you get access to all our courses, plus weekly webinars with myself and this outstanding M0A.com team. It's really like an interactive TV show broadcast from our studio, where you get to interact with a team of CFIs. We also offer live support and email support to make sure you succeed. Now, one thing you'll notice is that M0A is like nothing else on the market. It is truly a flight training community geared towards making you a safer, smarter pilot because a good pilot is always learning. It's much more than a slogan for us. It is truly a mission. So click below and take a two week, no strings attached trial of our top rated private instrument, commercial and FOI courses. Once you join our flight training community, I promise you will never want to leave.